So not too long ago, I did an unboxing and feature overview of the Omen 15 2020, and I asked you guys to submit your questions about this laptop for the full review. So instead of doing a Matt Mona's standard review, I'm just gonna take your questions and turn this video into something epic. The first question was about build materials. And the short answer is that the top lid is made out of plastic. It's using a rough texture to make the laptop more grippable. The bottom is made out of plastic, but the deck of the keyboard is made out of metal. The second question was about screen flex. Yes, there is a ton of screen flex. And even more so, when you press down on the lid of the laptop, it's super soft. It's like pressing on a mattress. Now, a lot of you are worried that you're gonna place this in your bag, you're gonna have books on top of it, and it would crack your display. I don't think that's gonna happen. This is a plastic lid with a plastic matte display. It has a lot of give. Now, if this was a glass panel, like on a MacBook Pro 16 or 13, then yes, I'd be super concerned. A book with this amount of flex would crack the display. You also wondered about the gap between the lid and the deck of the keyboard. I don't have too many worries about this. The downfall to this is that yes, you're gonna get a lot of dust and debris going inside of your laptop. But the upside to this is that it's better for cooling. This gap allows air to go through and allows the intake grill to bring the air in and then push it out through the bottom. This is better for airflow, especially for those individuals that take this laptop home, leave it closed or on vertical when they have it connected to a monitor. You want some airflow there because when there's no space, the laptop just gets much hotter. I know this goes without saying, but yes, this is an intake grill. These are not speakers for the laptop. The speakers for the Omen 15 are on the bottom side of the device. Now, one of you also asked about charging. Can you charge this laptop using the Thunderbolt 3 port? And you cannot. I tried a 100 watt charger. I tried Dell's 130 watt USB type C charger. The only way to charge this laptop is using the barrel connector that comes in the box. Another topic of concern was the display. Some of you said you watched other people's videos or read articles where the display wasn't that great. And there are some displays that are not good. There's different SKUs, different customizations you can get. Some have 60 Hertz displays. Those specific IPS panels have inferior color accuracy and color gamut. You're paying a lower price point, so you're buying a cheaper model. If you buy the one with the 300 Hertz display, you're getting fantastic color accuracy and good color gamut. Not only is this display that I have here good for gaming, it's also good for content creation. Now, obviously I didn't talk about performance in my unboxing, but I did put this through its paces. My model is the Intel model. I know some of you are gonna be like, AMD, no buy, and I get it. Okay, the AMD processors right now in laptops are superior, but here's the thing. If you want a 2070 Super or anything higher, you have to go with Intel. All the good NVIDIA GPUs are in the Intel models. The good news though, is that this model right here with its i7-10750H is outperforming the competition, especially when it comes to multi-core related tasks. Cinebench, it's doing a fantastic job beating out a lot of its competition. When it comes to GPU performance, this GPU is pulling 100 watts. The other thing to note is that gameplay is great. It's getting good frame rates. I didn't have any issues with drop frames. You're gonna be able to play all games comfortably on high settings at 1080p. The downfalls of this laptop is that when you have it on performance mode, it does get really hot. CPU temps will jump up to 97 to 98 degrees. You get really high clock speeds and you're getting 77 watts of the CPU, but you are dealing with high temperatures. The good news though is you don't have to deal with that. If you want to reduce the strain on the laptop, you just leave it in balance mode and the CPU temps will never go over 80. HP is giving you the ability to push this thing to its thermal limits and squeeze every ounce of performance. And for whatever reason, it makes you uncomfortable, you can easily switch it to balance and have good temperatures. Fan noise was a major question as well. You guys wanted to know how loud this is under full load. It does top up close to 60 decibels on performance mode. However, if you drop it down to balance mode, under full load, you're looking around 52 to 53 decibels. On idle, using balance mode, you're looking at about 44 decibels. So it's not the quietest laptop. There is some fan spinning, even doing simple productivity. And the last thing I wanna to touch on is battery life. Um, battery life on this is not great. I was only getting about two hours of use before needing to charge, and this is just doing simple productivity. So. Yes, I know it's a gaming laptop. Gaming laptops technically don't have good battery life, but I would have loved to see three to four. Small update. While I was filming B-roll on this laptop, HP pushed out an update to the Omen Control Center, and it changed the different 
cooling modes that you could use. Before you had comfort, default, and performance. Now there's just balance and performance. So I reran my battery test in balance mode and I was able to pull three hours. So here's the bottom line. I think HP did a fantastic job compared to the previous model. Yes, it's not perfect. No gaming laptop is, but I still think this is a good jump forward. Some people might have concerns with the squishy lid. Personally, I don't think it's a big deal in terms of durability. I don't think it's gonna break on you, but if it's gonna bother you or you have OCD, then there's other laptops you can choose from. The performance is fantastic. Yes, it gets hot in performance mode, but at least you have the option to be there. If, if for whatever reason the thermals are too hot for your taste, you can drop it back down to balance and have a more cool, quiet thermal experience. If you have any more questions about this laptop or if you wanna see me compare this to the AMD model, let me know in the questions down below. Also, someone asked about uh, the ability to install studio drivers on this, and the answer is yes. You can switch between studio drivers or gaming drivers using NVIDIA's GeForce experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, because if you did, feel free to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.